Hey everyone, it's Andy here from CNC Labs. Today we're going to be going over our August 2024 production updates. Starting off, we have now shipped the first 50 or so alt mills back in July, and we're getting ready to ship the next 50 machines at the start of August. We're about to get probably about 16 to 20 pallets in this week of alt mill materials and we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll start shipping machines uh, from that batch and then we'll get another batch of parts near mid to end of August that will be able to help us build another 100 alt mills. We've also started batch two production for alt mills as well, which will be another 200 machines. Um, however, we have a batch of 200, uh, 200 sets of parts for batch two, but we've also ordered um, 400 sets of parts for some of the smaller things like couplers, brackets, plates, things that we can store here and they don't take up too much space, uh, but will help us save time to do the supply chain on. Um, things that we know that we're going to use for the, the next batch, we'll be able to um, save yeah, time on, on the supply chain and get through all the parts and do the packaging assembly up front so that once we clear out on batch two, when we go into batch three, um, we're only ordering the big parts. So stuff that we're only ordering 200 sets of will be rails, the ball screws, um, high ticket items like the motors, the controllers. Um, so yeah, we'll probably have a very full back warehouse um, over the next couple of weeks, but uh, you know, we're working hard to get the machines out. There is a couple of things that we learned from uh, starting the shipping for the first 50 machines. We found that some of the shipments were, the packaging was damaged. And so we've made a lot of changes to the packaging to make them more durable. And we've added more padding around certain key areas. We also missed out on shipping dust shields for the first 13 units. Those are, that has now been resolved. Also, we had some quality control issues when we received some of the parts. For example, some of the bearing blocks were not the right height. We're able to fix those manually for the first batch and we've addressed them for production on the future batches. And so we've had a number of things that we had to tweak and improve the quality on so that moving forward on production, we're able to uh, build them faster and more consistently. Um, another thing that we're working on, we had some small glitches with G-Sender as well as the, the motors and so we're updating firmware and updating the software as well to address those things. However, overall, uh, we've gotten great feedback from the first batch of users on the assembly and the, the use of the machine, which has been largely positive and we're also seeing a lot of people start to use their machines to make stuff and it's really exciting to see especially the people who have long mills already see the speed and the performance difference between those two machines so um, thanks for everyone who posted and shared their feedback with us and uh, yeah we'll be continuing to make the machines better there are a couple other things that we're working on uh, one is to have replacement parts available for alt mill um, Right now, if you have some uh, replacement part that you need, you can just email us directly and we can help you get those things. We'll have them on the store like everything else so that any part that wears out or uh, needs to be replaced, they can be ordered from our store. Uh, we'll also have more documentation available for adding the vortex, using the dust shoe, the spindle, um, and also the assembly video for the alt mill. That's all being worked on right now and those will be coming out in the next couple of weeks to a few months. Um, so yeah, that's, there's a lot of work being done on the alt mill side of things. News for long mill, long mill mark two, 2.5. Uh, not a whole lot of news there. We've received another batch of uh, parts for the next 1,500 uh, long mills. And so most machines are shipping out within a couple of days. Um, we're expecting that to be turning around pretty quickly for, for the next little bit so because we have everything available to start shipping them. A lot of people have been asking us for uh, having an official spindle kit for the long mill. We see a lot of people using aftermarket spindles with their machines. And so now that we've gone through the quality control process, the ordering, the design, and everything around for the alt mill, we, are, we have the uh, long mill, specific long mill spindle kit available now. 
um, if you want to put a spindle on your machine. And we do recommend that you use uh, the SLB, the super long board, with your machine because if you plug it in with the RS-485, which is all wired and set up for the spindle, you'll be able to use features like speed control and um, wait, for, wait for speed, or basically you can set a speed on your on G sender and it'll wait until that speed is hit before you start cutting. Um, there's gonna be like stall detection, so if the spindle stops for some reason, it'll, the machine will stop as well. And yeah, just um, continual uh, development be based on the communication that we can have with the SLB and the uh, spindle. If you want to read um, some of the testing data and uh, all the information about the spindle kit and how we kind of made sure that we knew that it was going to be compatible, we do have a blog post you can find on our on our blog page, so make sure to check that out. Uh, another project that we've been working on for the last year almost is the Sprouter project. Um, that was that kind of started off with us trying to see if we can find a, a CNC router, sorry, the Makita router alternative. Um, as you might know, there's like clones and stuff available um, from a number of different companies that basically plug and play where your Makita would go. Um, however, based on our testing and kind of the rabbit hole we went down, we found some brushless DC motors that had a really high performance. Um, so in terms of that, we last month we uh, shared some data on our testing, which showed us that we're, it was really promising. However, we are still waiting on motors that will run on 110 and doing the testing on that. We did hit some uh, small hiccups in terms of the fit of the new motors, but um, we're getting that sorted out. In the meantime, we've also uh, I'm experimenting with the Makita clones. So those are with the brushed motor, so the same as the Makita. However, we wanted to make something that had a couple extra features. One was the PWM input. So for a lot of the controllers, um, including the super long board and the original long board, as well as the large majority of CNC controllers that exist on the market, they have a, a five volt PWM output that allows you to control the speed of the spindle. And that's how we used to control the pulses of the laser beam currently. Um, basically the idea was to have that speed control and also have manual speed control as a, on a dial, same as the Makita, so that you can um, have the kind of the same features as a spindle without obviously the big price tag. And secondarily, um, the Makita uses its own proprietary collet, which we do sell uh, eighth inch and quarter inch sizes for. However, the ER11 system, which is common with these type of routers, they're superior because one, you can buy collets that range a bunch of different sizes and they're generally more accurate. Um, so we also have been working on making sure that also works with the uh, clone that we're working on. Yeah, we received one of the the, the motors that um, we got as a sample, and we've established some parameters of what we need the performance to look like in terms of speed control. And we're happy to say that the performance is very good on the new speed control. Um, one of the things that we look for is to make sure that once it goes into the material, it doesn't slow down too much and it adjusts for its speed. And one of the interesting things we found was the stock Makita controller, it will go in and slightly overshoot speed until settling to the uh, the speed that it's supposed to be at. And we, we suspect that the setting for um, to compensate for the speed is pretty aggressive. Whereas for the, uh, the other motor that we tested, once it runs into material, it does slow down slightly, but it picks up speed, but it doesn't overshoot. So it's, uh, we feel that it's a little bit smoother of a, of a reaction, and we feel that it may be a better method than uh, using the Makita speed control. So uh, we're also finding that at the very low end of the speed torque, well, sorry, at the low end of the RPM range, the power output is slightly, slightly lower, but once it goes past a certain RPM, I think it was like 18,000 RPM, it actually um, has a little bit more power advantage on the high end of the, on the motor. It'll have almost pretty much no effect like for the user. It'll be pretty negligible, 
but those are some of the things we noticed from our testing. I think the last thing I'll bring up about stuff that we're working on is the uh, panel computer. Um, as we kind of mentioned a couple months ago, we were trying to find an inexpensive computer that people can use to control G-Sender. And the good thing is that the, con the computer that we got with no fans, uh, with the new uh, CPU, and um, yeah, the new, the new CPU and new RAM, that one works fantastic. It's an excellent computer, it's very affordable. The only thing that we're kind of working on right now is the licensing. Uh, we tested with Linux, and Linux does work, but from what we understand, because of graphics compatibility with G-Sender, it doesn't have the same amount of performance as we do with uh, Windows. So we do have to pay for Windows if we want to have it on the computer, um, but because we're getting the computers from China, they're not able to supply us with like the North American version of the, of the software. Um, so Charles is currently going around to try to find a, a way for us to buy the licenses as an OEM. However, this process has taken a long time and we haven't really been able to figure that out yet. And so that's sort of our, our bottleneck in a way. There are a couple things that we are doing though. Uh, we're getting samples for the mount and we're designing different ways to put the computer on either the long mill or the alt mill. So we'll have like a plug and play option so that uh, it'll be like right in front of you essentially um, so that as soon as we get the licensing fig thing figured out, we'll, we're able to uh, kind of hit the, the ground running once, once that happens, you know, work, work in progress for that. Um, yeah. Otherwise there's been a lot of stuff kind of behind the scenes happening at the shop. The uh, production teams shuffled a lot of things around. We've cleared up a lot of the workspace to get prepared for all the alt mill parts coming in and all the new parts that are coming in as well. Another piece of news to look out for, we are going to be at the UGM for the Vectric meetup in uh, Texas in October. Um, so if you guys are gonna be there, we'll see you there. We'll be bringing down an alt mill and uh, Vortex and some cool prizes and a bunch of other stuff. Scott will also be doing demos and doing a class there as well, so make sure uh, if you check it out. Um, we'll put more details on the blog and stuff, and uh, that's uh, pretty exciting for us. And I think we have another show in Hamilton in November too, right? Yeah, so as the year starts to end, uh, we're starting to go to the uh, events again, so make sure to keep an eye out on that, and if you want to meet up with us, uh, make sure to check out our blog for more information. Otherwise, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Um, not a whole lot for this month in terms of new development, just things that are work in progress. But yeah, as the year picks up, we'll have more news to share. Otherwise, make sure to check out the blog. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time.